In this example, we're going to show you how to create the rocket nameplate you can see on the screen. We'll be looking at a range of vector creation tools, including the ability to create arcs and how to modify vectors, including offsetting. We'll also take a look at using the smart cursor to help the location of vectors easier, as well as the ability to create text and also how to modify its curvature and spacing. So with this now, we're going to start by creating a new part and start building our vectors to create this nameplate. So on the top, we're going to go to File New, and I'm going to select a single-sided job. In this case, it's going to be 12 inches in X, 5 inches in Y, and half an inch thick. And our Z0 will be off the material surface, and our XY date and position will be in the lower left-hand corner. So with that now, we have our rectangular job space on the screen, and we can now look to start adding some vectors. Now one thing that I also check before we start building any vectors is whether we're using any of our geometry snapping and smart snapping. And you can see here at the top of the menu that our three options, we've got grid, smart and geometry, that geometry and snap are switched on at the moment, which is what we would want for this particular type of job. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is move across and start creating some arcs. Okay, so I'm going to go across to the Create Vectors menu and select the Create Arc option. And we have two different options. We have the ability to use it by specifying sort of a start and end and then a position somewhere on the arc. Or we've got the ability to specify the center and the start and the end. In this case, we're going to go for the three point option. And I'm simply going to come onto the screen now and click with my left mouse key for point number one, my left mouse key for point number two, and then just uh, specify the radius. So I've got a very approximate uh, representation on the screen. I'm now going to come back to my form and modify those parameters to make sure that it's accurate for this particular drawing. So with this now, I've got the start point here. So I'm going to enter a value of one and then 3.5 for the Y value, come down to the end point, which is going to be specified as 11 and also 3.5 in Y. And I don't know the radius in this case, but I do know that I want three quarters of an inch displacement. So I'm just going to apply that on the screen. And as you can see there now, we have that vector placed correctly. So with that, I'm just going to close down that form now, and we're going to look to start building the lower half of the border and then obviously linking it all together. Now to build that lower vector, I could think about using another arc command, but instead I know that uh, the bottom half happens to be an offset of three inches from the top one. So the best thing to do is for me to use the offsetting command. So if I come across to the left hand side, we can clearly see offset and layout at the bottom and we can see the offset command. So I'm just going to pop open that form and you can see on the screen that we have the direction of offsetting either outwards or inwards or both and we have the distance and some other options as to whether we want to delete the original and select the new so in this case I'm trying to decide with an open vector which way I want to offset the vector so I always think of uh, thinking about being stood on the start position of the line looking along it that start position is shown by the black dot there so imagine being stood looking down that line and then obviously what you've got on the left and what you've got on the right so in this case I know that I want to offset it to the right so I have that selected at the top of the screen and I'm going to specify my distance in this case it's going to be three inches and I'm just going to offset that down now to the bottom of the screen so with that I can close down that form and I now need to think about how to join these two lines together well there's a number of different ways we can do it one of those would be to create a polyline between these two points here but I think a far easier way is to select the two vectors okay so we're going to select those two vectors now and look to use one of the joining commands here so we've got a selection of joining commands at the bottom and I'm going to fit the close vectors with a straight line so if I select that now it will um, create a line between the two points but of course it's not closed there because it's still open at the other end so if I hit it again now it will close that into one single entity and you can see that it has joined it all together just has one single vector so now I now need to think about creating the inner vector and once again rather than building this separately I know that it's a 3 8 offset of the outer vector so with that I can come into the form now and because I have a closed vector it's far easier to understand what is inside and outside so I want to go inwards 
okay and I want to go by a fraction which is 3 8 so I'm not too sure what that is in decimals but that's easy to do with the software so I just specify 3 over 8 and then specify an equal sign and that will convert that from the fraction to the decimal so with that now I can offset that on the screen and now we have our two vectors our outer vector and our inner vector okay so the next stage is to create the drill holes in order to mount the plaque on a wall and add the curved rocket text inside the central vector so I'm going to come across to my create vectors menu now and select the draw circle command and I need to change the diameter from 0.25 to 0.125 and I need to create the circle halfway between the top left hand corner of the inner vector and the top left hand corner of the outer vector now to do that is very simple with the smart cursor you don't need to create any construction geometry just come in and hover over that left hand mouse key I'm not pressing any map button on the mouse I'm simply just waking that point up I'm going to come across now and wake the other point up this will then create a construction line between and the notice that the cursor changes denoting the midpoint between those two points and I simply click on it to create that circle we're going to do the same now with the lower left hand corner once again I just come in and wake up the first corner come down and wake up the second corner move along the line and find the center point so with that I'm just going to sort of zoom out now and we can clearly see that we've got two points on the left I could go and use the same command on the right hand side but in this case I'm going to come in now select that vector come into the mirror selected objects menu and I now want to flip around the job center which is switched on I want to create a mirrored copy which is switched on and I want to flip horizontal and that will create the two on the other side so now we've created four drill holes okay so I'm going to close out that form now and we can look to create the text in the center okay so we're going to move across to the create vectors menu and select the draw text and the first thing I need to do is to change the font type so I'm going to hit the drop down menu hit a on the keyboard which will drop me down to the A's and then I'm going to select Arial from the menu I now need to make sure this is set as being bold um, it's going to be center aligned when I click on the screen and the text height is going to be 1.2 so I'm simply going to position that and then type in rocket on the screen okay and close out the form I'm going to center it now by coming up to the transform objects and the align selected objects and hit the align to material center and now we're going to think about how we want to position this you clearly you can see the rocket is horizontal and needs to be curved to fit into that internal vector so there's a couple of different ways we can do this okay the first one is a little bit loose the second one will be uh, absolutely accurate so I'm going to select the edit text spacing and curve command whilst the, whilst the text is selected and you can see that we've got these upper and lower green points so here you can see I can manipulate this okay so I'm going to move this up and tell them what I think looks parallel okay and then I can if I want move this down and get this sort of semi-central here um, is the gap at the top the same as the gallum at the bottom um, it could be but it's not truly accurate okay and I can come in and edit the spacing etc with this command too but to be honest I'd rather do this and get an accurate gap top and bottom so with this I'm just going to come out of the command and just come back to the position that we had originally okay and think about using a different command which is the text wrapping so with that I have the vector the uh, text already selected I'm going to hit shift on the keyboard to select the internal vector come up to the text on a curve or wrap text along a curve and select that and we are now open into a menu okay so what do I need to do to make sure this is evenly wrapped between the two well of course I need to know that what distance that needs to be so I'm a little bit premature here so I'm going to close out that form and come back into the measure menu okay so with that I'm going to select the measure menu and I'm going to find out the distance here find out the height of my uh, text and minus the two together to find the gap so I'm just going to click with the left mouse key and the 
the left mouse key again and we can see at the top there 2.25 inches and now I'm going to do the same for the text and that is 1.2 inches so roughly we're talking 2.2 minus 1.2 we've got an inch uh, that would mean that we would have half inch at the top and half inch at the bottom okay so with that close out the form I'm going to select the text shift and pick the vector come back into the wrapping text command and immediately I know that I want to specify an offset distance of 0.5 okay and with that now um, I, you can see on the right hand side this sort of grey dot which denotes the lower central position and I'm simply going to click on this with my left mouse key and then move it into the window and you can see it's moved roughly across um, I need to increase the spacing a little bit because what I want is roughly around about a half inch gap on the edges as well so I'm just going to move this across and then possibly just increase the spacing a little okay in this case I've gone a little bit too high and a little bit more down and we're just about there okay so I'm happy with that I've got an even gap top and bottom and roughly half an inch on the sides as well and I'm going to close out that form so as I click on the screen now you can see that we've got our inner and outer vectors our four drill holes and our text correct and now we can go ahead and save this part with a view to looking at the toolpathing in a later presentation which is shown as one of the linked videos so with that I'm going to go file save as and I'm going to pick this as the rocket nameplate vector drawing and just save that file ready for the toolpathing